In this lesson, we're going to be getting more familiar with Adobe Illustrator interface, and you might be seeing the same interface like this one, or you might be having a different layout or interface according to your Adobe Illustrator version and which workspace you are on. So I want you guys to go to that part of your Adobe Illustrator and select from that drop down menu Essential Classic because probably most of you guys are on Essentials which is missing that part from Adobe Illustrator however for previous versions of Adobe Illustrator that control bar is mandatory so we're gonna be selecting Essentials Classic so everyone can be following along easily within that course and for older versions, you're not going to be seeing that properties panel in here, which was added recently to Adobe Illustrator. But don't worry about that, guys. You're not going to be missing a lot because it's so similar to that control bar. So now let's get to know even more about that amazing application. So that white space is our artboard where we're going to be drawing and designing our designs. And you can think of it as your sketch. And on the left side, you will be seeing your toolbar including different tools to do different tasks so for example we have the selection tool we can be selecting our design elements maybe that shape or we can be selecting that type or we can be selecting maybe the pen tool to start drawing or type tool to type or rectangle to start drawing simple rectangles or squares and so on and as you can see by hovering over any of these tools you will start seeing its name and also you will be seeing the shortcut for that one so if we need to zoom in and out within our document we can be hovering over that zoom tool and you will see that we have the shortcut for that one Z we can be pressing that on keyboard to select that tool or we can be selecting that hand tool or pressing H on keyboard to select that one to start navigating through our document and so on I'm gonna be learning how to use these tools in details through that course so don't worry about them guys and here in that upper section of our program we have the control bar which is giving us control over our design elements or objects so here for example we have that artwork was selected by the selection tool we can be changing that one's color by clicking that arrow and we can be selecting from any of these colors in here so we can be selecting maybe that color or get it back to white as it was just like that or we can be changing our font family by clicking that font selector and you will be seeing all these fonts to choose from or you can be changing your font style or size from here or you can be aligning your design elements by clicking that align panel and you will see these aligning options or even transform your element or object by clicking the transform panel which you can see it in here and also you can be seeing the same options in that properties panel in here so you can be transforming your type or change its appearance maybe for fill color by clicking on white you can be changing the color or even changing your font family as well from here so as you can see there is no much difference between the properties panel and our control bar and these control options will be changing according to our design element so if we're not selecting type and maybe selecting that shape in here we will not be seeing an option to change our font family because it's not a type and same as well for the properties panel you will not be seeing the character control options and if we're not selecting anything by clicking in that white space we will be having very general options just like document setup or preferences which are also the same in here however we can be changing our units we can be selecting maybe inches if we would like or we can be hiding our ruler or show grid or show transparency grid so speaking of that right side it's containing our different panels so you can be seeing your libraries by clicking in here and we have even more panels in that bar and those are called iconic panels and if we place our mouse on the edge we can be dragging that iconic panels to see their names till you get even more familiar with these icons so you can be opening your swatches by clicking that one and you will be seeing also your colors 
So as you probably noticed, you can be accessing the same thing from different locations within that amazing application. And each panel will be having even more options by clicking that hamburger menu to access more options concerning that panel. And some of these options can be existing within your panel as buttons in here. So you can be creating a new swatch also from that button. And as you can see, you can be creating a new swatch also from here. We're going to be covering also these panels in detail later. And we can be disconnecting any of these panels by dragging that one, maybe outside. And if you double click swatches, it will be collapsed like that and click it once it will be reopened and you can get it back to its place by hovering over these panels you will be seeing that blue shade which is telling us that we can be docking that panel in that area or we can be docking our panel as well maybe in that part as it was so we have our swatches back again to its place and we can be rearranging that one maybe above our brushes maybe to set them in more organized way. So as you can see, we have the type panels close to each other. We have the character, paragraph, and open type panel. And probably you're not seeing these panels in here, guys. So you can be accessing these panels by going to window, and you will be seeing all these panels in here. So you can be going all the way down, and you will find type, and you can be selecting character panel, which is already in here, as you can see. So maybe I'm going to be selecting character styles and we'll be having that panel. So I'm going to be collapsing that one and maybe I'm going to be adding that one to our panels by dragging that one to here. So we have all these type panels in here. Or we can be removing that one by opening that panel and drag it outside, then close it. And as you can see, guys, I've got that layers panel in here because it's really important one. And probably you have that one in here maybe at that area so you can be dragging that one to place it maybe in that part as well and you can be customizing the height of that one by dragging your panel maybe to that part and you can be adding maybe your stroke panel all the way to here and you can be minimizing your stroke panel a little bit by clicking these arrows to reduce its height like that so your workspace, as you can see, can get so customizable according to your needs. However, I'm going to be setting that stroke one back to its place because I like it that way. And I'm going to be extending that one all the way to here because in some lessons, you're going to be seeing that layers panel full of layers. So it's better for me to leave it that way. And you can be expanding these panels by clicking that arrow or get them back to iconic, which is saving us so much space. And also we can be collapsing these panels to icons by clicking that arrow to have them in a smaller scale like that. And same as well for your toolbar, you can be clicking that one to get your tools in one column. However, I really like it in two columns. So you can be seeing all your tools in better way. And we can be dragging our toolbar from here to undock it. And it will be floating like that. And we can be docking that one maybe in that area or get it back to its place by placing it on the left side and you will be seeing the blue shade again. So you can be customizing your workspace the way you would like. Then you can be saving that workspace or even you can be creating more than a workspace to switch between them according to your designing process. So let's say we need to save that workspace. We're going to be going to Essentials Classic again. And as you can see, we can be resetting that Essentials Classic. So feel free, guys, to mess around if you would like. You can be resetting that anytime from here. Or you can be saving that one as a new workspace. And let's call this one Main Workspace. And it will be saved. Then we can be switching maybe to Benting Layout which is looking quite similar to older Adobe Illustrator layouts. And I really like that look, by the way. However, we can be getting back to our newly created workspace by clicking that arrow and selecting main workspace. One more thing to mention in here, guys, if we would like to hide our panels and our toolbar, we can be pressing tab on keyboard just for more space of our artboard. 
and we can be restoring them once again by pressing tab and our final thing to mention in here guys is how to save our file so here as you can see we have two documents opened in here that one is called the black calligraph and that number in here is our zoom level however for that document in here it's a blank artboard as you can see so let's type anything selecting our type tool or pressing T and we're gonna be clicking anywhere maybe typing design and pressing escape to stop typing and you will see that bounding box which we can be enlarging our type by dragging that bounding box pressing shift and changing that one's color maybe to that gray and let's say we need to save that file we're gonna be going to file save as and we can give it a name maybe design text and we can be choosing where to save it from here and for the format you will see that it's by default on AI or Adobe Illustrator AI which is Adobe Illustrator native file of course you can be choosing from other formats by clicking that arrow however it's really recommended that you save it firstly on AI then you can be exporting or saving other formats maybe for other purposes maybe printing or sending as JPEG or BNG and so on we're gonna be learning how to do that later but make sure to save your file or you will be losing your designs so I'm gonna be pressing save and you don't need to change any of these options however it's telling you that this version is Illustrator CC and you can be choosing maybe an older version for compatibility issues so maybe you're sending your design file for someone who's using maybe Illustrator 3 or I don't know so some features or visuals created on that CC version might not be compatible with that older version so you might be saving that one for that case however in most of the cases you're gonna be leaving that one on CC as it is and you're gonna be pressing OK and if you made any changes to your file or modifications like maybe changing that color to that color for instance make sure to also save that to your saved file by going to file and this time we're gonna be choosing save or command or control s you might need to memorize that shortcut guys because you need to be acquiring that habit saving your work every now and then so you're always safe if anything happens so you can be choosing to save that one or you can be saving that one as a copy which will be generating another file or even you can save that one as a template which could be helpful sometimes but anyway I'm gonna be saving that one and that's it for this lesson thank you so much for your time take care and I'll be seeing you